All right, welcome back everybody. Here we are up to uh, part 37 of the Blue Nose build. And the sails are done. Uh, the next step is getting them on the ship. Uh, there's a little story behind this. <laughs> um, I thought I thought what I would do is after some consideration I was going to take them to a seamstress. All right. So I got on the phone and I looked around and I found one not too far down the road and uh, I talked to this woman on the phone and uh, I made the mistake of telling her that you know I had already had an estimate of about a hundred dollars and I thought oh I shouldn't have done that but she came back and said to me that sounds a little steep because I explained to her what I had what I was going to bring her said she had never done this before but she was up to the challenge and thought it would be kind of nice to try something like this so I took the time getting everything together and uh, I went down there to see her a couple days later and uh, I walked in and, and, and the woman I had talked to on the phone she was busy she was with some girl doing a, uh, a fitting on a wedding dress so she had three other girls in the shop so I said well I'll sit and wait well and a couple minutes later this elderly woman and some young girl came over and said well let's see what you got so I pulled all the material out. I had eight sails. I had all the lines drawn on them. The pattern was there. I had the string I was giving them. And all they had to do was run it through a sewing machine for me. Well, <laughs> that's where the fun starts. Now let me get my little paper here. Okay, they looked at them and uh, well, you know, they thought nothing to it, you know. And I says, okay. I said, uh, well, what are we talking here? And the elderly woman, who I didn't get along with too good, <laughs> she told me I was looking at 15 to $20 per sale. And I, I said, what? I said, I talked to the girl on the phone, and she told me that $100 was she felt a little steep and I said you're giving me a price of anywhere between hundred and twenty to hundred and sixty dollars well you know our time is money and this and that I said listen you don't need to tell me about time and money I you know I said I'm an ex teamster I know everything about a fair day's pay for a fair day's work I got no problem with that but you know you're, you're giving me a price close to $150 to do this. I said, the model didn't even cost that much. And I says, I'm giving you the material. I'm giving you the pattern. I'm giving you the string. You're out nothing. All you got to do is just sew for me. And uh, I asked the, the young girl, I says, well, how long do you think this would take you? And she said, oh, three to five hours. <laughs> three to five hours. And so you're talking anywhere from $24 to $32 an hour. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I can understand if you had to buy the material and do things, but I've given you everything. So we kind of argued back and forth, and uh, you know what? I said to hell with it. I threw it all in a box, and I brought it home. And I was not a happy camper. I was not. So I thought, well, there's no other way around this but to do this myself. There's no use in getting on the phone and running all over the city and trying to find another seamstress. I'm not trying to get this done for nothing, but I, you know, I, I'm not, I don't want to pay an arm and a leg uh, for something that really actually turned out to be kind of simple. So after a day of uh, moping around, I finally sat down and I started sewing. And from start to finish, it took me right around 12 to 15 hours. And that's for someone who's never sewn before. Now, like I said, I had to do a crash course in this, you know, and I had to learn all about the machine, and, and I explained all that before. So I was able 
to get it done in about 12 to 15 hours and I'll tell you what I am really pleased with the way they turned out uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you here a couple a little short clip of the three steps that I went through I'm not gonna really show you the sewing because like I said I don't want this to get into a sewing uh, video but I just show you you know three different steps in the process I went along from start to finish and uh, then when it's over we'll come back and I'll show you the sales all right all right there's all my patterns all laid out ready to go you can see I got all the uh, all the lines drawn on them and that there is my half inch for my hem that line there would be the actual size of the sail from that line to that line and that line all right wish me luck there's the sewing machine I'll be using So let's get her done. Okay, so here I am about uh, five and a half hours later, I guess, somewhere around there. And I managed to get all my straight stitching done. All that. Now what I have to do is get my hems. Got to do the hems on uh, six of them yet. I've got two done here. There's one done. And there's one done. Now they might look a little wrinkled. And I'm hoping, you know, you iron them and you can get them straight, flattened out pretty good. Uh, this line here might seem a little curved, especially down here on the bottom. But I'm hoping once it gets on there and you tug on it and you tie this down, uh, I'm hoping that straightens all that stuff out. I don't remember which sale that one is. Uh, that might be one that just gets tied off on the points. So now it's just a matter of getting all my hems done. That's the hardest part. Doing these straight lines as a piece of cake. But now I just got to get my hems done. I'm trying to find an easy way to do that. All right. All right. So there we go. Got them all sewn. Got all my hems in. and here's what it looks like from the other side got to do a little trimming on some string laying around here and there but then I got to get my little rings on the ends and I can start putting some sails on okay okay so uh, here's my sails at least here's six of them I've got the largest one laying over on the other side of the room and another one here um, I've got the largest one over there because I really don't want to handle it too much but uh, here's the rest of them you know I've got them, got them all complete got the hems all done and I'll discuss the hems here in a minute I found a pretty simple way to do that uh, here's these two that are kind of curved here like that got that little curve in them now there's six of them or I should say let's say it like this there's two sails that have the reef reef points in it or reef lines whatever you want to call them uh, and that be the largest one that's why I don't want to handle it too much I got them all ironed out nice and straight but uh, you can see after I got done sewing my sails getting all my lines in, getting my hems in. Then I came along and put the little 
rings on the corners. Let me bring this up here so you can see it. I got the little rings that the sails tie off on on all the corners. Now I had to hand sew them on there. Just took some needle and thread and that would be the same thread that I used in doing the the lines and everything. And I sewed them little rings onto each corner. All right? So, sales are done. And I am really pleased with the way they turned out. Now, you know, it's not 100% professional. I might have a couple little crooked lines here on my seams, on my hems, but I am really pleased with them. For somebody that's never done nothing like this, never touched a sewing machine before, I, I'm really happy. Now, you know, when it comes to sewing machine, I was using a Singer, uh, a pretty decent model. Uh, I had two to choose from. I had a, a, a cheaper model Singer that belongs to my daughter-in-law, and then my wife had one. And uh, I used I used ours. It was a little bit more expensive, a little bit uh, does a little bit more, but they came out real nice. And and I will say this: I broke the machine. <laughs> I uh, in the last video I was telling you how these come to a point like this. If you start out on that point, that needle comes along. Let me get my pointer. If you start out on this point, that needle will come down and drive that material down into that machine and it jams it up. Okay? So that's why I started on a wider point, more of a square area, and sewed up to it. Okay? And what happened is, I got it jammed up in there one time, and I really screwed it up. I got the sewing machine out of time. So, if you know anything, or never, you probably never experienced this before, I'm sure. But when a sewing machine is out of time, the needle comes down, and it's supposed to grab the bobbin thread. And if that needle doesn't come down and meet this thing spinning at the right spot, it's out of time. And I had it way off. So I had to tear the bottom of the machine apart, loosen up one of the gears, and spin this thing around to get it to where it was lined back up. So, you know, that took me a couple hours figuring that out. And once again, thanks to YouTube, I was able to find that in no time and figure out what my problem was and had it fixed. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's just problems you're probably going to run into. So, uh... Like I said, I am really pleased with them. I, I think they came out real nice. Good enough for my ship. Here they are. Each and every one of them. Instead of showing them all to you, they, they all look the same pretty much. Now, let me bring this one over here. This is one of the two. I have the larger mainsail, like I said, on the other side of the room. And you can see these little reef lines I had to put in. I had to hand stitch every one of them in there. And then when I got them in, I came along with a ruler, laid it down, and trimmed them all off nice and even. All right? So that was a couple more hours just sitting there on the couch watching television and stitching in each and every one of these little reef lines okay so there that is but you can see them sales they, they turned out really really nice I'm gonna put you on hold here a second we'll come right back I got something to take care of okay I'm back I had to go out and talk to the sweetie um, but like I said I don't want to, to get this into a sewing video and, and I don't need comments on how to sew you know I got it done I am very happy with it. Um, I, I, you know, I don't know what else to say. Uh, I know there was probably easier ways to do what I'd done, but the end result is it's finished and it looks nice. Now, let me tell you about these hems. I was having troubles with these hems. Here's the other side of it. Okay. And you can see I got little pieces here where I hand stitched. I left them over 
because in reality when they do let this down halfway they have to tie to something so you got to have them on both sides they're a little bit shorter on this side but that's fine but uh, you can see the back of it you know you can see the hem but that's going to be on the side that the ship is really not displayed okay but this hem let's talk about this for a second um, there's a way to get around this and the woman down at the at the seamstress place she was telling me well I wouldn't do it that way and I said well how would you do it and basically what she was telling me is she would sew two sails together okay and you and basically uh, you do it inside out so your hem is buried inside except for one of them you're gonna to have to have one that once you pull it right side back you have to get to one of the hems from the outside but basically what she was saying is she was gonna make two sails together to make one and you would not see that hem okay it would be a solid piece of material more or less you know two sails together sandwiched together although that's not a bad idea but <laughs> I don't have I didn't have the gumption to do it so I went with this alright and I mean it sounds like a good idea if you're worried really about seeing this on the other side of the ship then that's the way to go take the time and sew two halves together it's gonna to make your sail a little thicker but uh, it would probably make it look a hundred percent better so anyway this hem how did I get this without going through a bunch of trouble because these big old fingers had problems trying to fold double fold this hem so what I done was here's my hem let's pretend this is my sail and here is my hem and right there is a pencil line drawn for my half inch of hem so what I done was I took it folded it over on that on that line and ironed it so I got a nice straight flat line there I ironed it okay then I took this here tacky glue this is made for material this is if you don't want to sew you use this stuff and it was working pretty nice it was working to the point where I didn't need to stitch my hem but I wanted it stitched because in real life it would be stitched and you got to be real careful with this you don't want to get a whole lot of this on there you want to use this very sparingly because you got to sew through this so you don't want too much glue in there and getting that needle jammed up or stuck so once I had my first fold made then I came along and I took this tacky glue stuff let me see if I can get it to come out okay here we go and I put this right along that line there on the inside or the outside of that line I just ran it right on down very sparingly just enough to, to have a line there you can't hardly see it okay so I took and did that and then I just sat here and brought this over to meet where I, I ironed that line at. Alright, now this will work now if you don't want if you don't have a sewing machine or you don't want not up to the challenge. This will work real good. Alright, so there's my first fold in that hem. Then I came along and put another line here. And like I said, you, if you're going to sew, you want to use this sparingly, not a whole lot, just enough to hold that material down. And this stuff works great. That's what this stuff is made for. And I just took and folded my second line over alright and there's my hem 
right there just like that nothing to it that's what that was the easiest way for me to do this you know and um, like I said there you know the sewing machine the singer that I got does make a foot that as you're sewing you get it started and it will automatically tuck that under you know this worked out great this worked out just fine and then I took and just ran a stitch right on down there just like this I just ran a stitch right on down that right about in the middle of that because you can see it nice and slow with the machine so you kinda got a straight line and that's what I did and, and, it, and it turned out simple it, it really worked you know uh, like I said before I was gonna do the tissue thing nah you know I, I, I just drew them lines on with a pencil and I sewed right through them and you cannot see a pencil line because that stitch as long as you're nice and straight and stay on that pencil line that pencil line is buried within that stitch you don't even notice it or see it okay and you have to remember one thing what side is going to be your good side what side are you displaying so that when you go folding this hem you got it folded to the right position to the right side because that's one of the reasons why I did my lines first so I knew what side was the good side and what side was the bad side what they call in sewing the bad side okay so uh, just make sure you're consistent with the way you fold it and sew it take your time like I said took me 12 to 15 hours and that was taking a couple cigarette breaks <laughs> but uh, you know without that if you wanted to do it uh, real simple you could take this material get a real good straight line and put this glue down the edge of that material and it will keep it from fraying okay you will have a nice you know, as long as you got a nice straight line you can keep it from fraying uh, the glue if you hold it up to the light you will see it but not very not very good super glue you will really see don't use super glue on your material but uh, what this stuff is for is to keep this from happening see how you get all them frays there from the material if you was to run this glue down there that would keep that from happening will keep that material from coming apart and the only reason I didn't do it this way is just cut my sail out and put that stuff on the edge like I said I'm gonna be tying rings off on on my uh, rigging I'm gonna be having rings tied off on this stuff and I wanted the strength of this hem here to hold a stitch because I'm gonna have to stitch every one of them little rings I put on here so that's pretty much it you know it's just now uh, getting them up here and getting them on the ship I am gonna have to make some adjustments I seen when I, I put this up to the ship it's a little off but the nice thing is the lower boom will raise up a little bit the upper gaffs will come down a little bit I've got all kinds of adjustments I can make to get these on there right so that's the next step uh, the three jib uh, sails up in the front I've got a lot of them little rings to sew on there I'm trying to figure out what's going to be the easy, easiest way to do that so I'm, I'm still trying to figure that part out alright so like I said sails are done uh, like I, I don't want to touch the big one I want I kinda of keeping it laying over there because I had to iron every one of these out. I had to get a little water on the string to straighten it out, then iron them. And I, I, I want to keep them as straight as I can without handling any more than I have to. But they are all complete. Uh, really, if you've never done this before and your wife's got a sewing machine, give it a shot. Practice. 
it's uh, well worth the money. I saved myself well over a hundred dollars, and I, I, you know, I'm really happy. You know, I was dreading this through this whole build, thinking about these sales, and and you know, this is the type of ship. To me, that I know it's a, a it was a fishing ship, but to me, this is a sailboat, and. A sailboat has to have the sails. You got to show the sails, and uh, there was no way around it. You know, now the old time ships, the old square riggers, that's more about rigging, all that rigging you do, and then you put sails on it and you hide it all. To me, the old time ships, I would furl my sails. You know. A lot of guys like to display the sails. That's fine. You know, it's whatever you want to do. But to me, this ship, it begs for sails. It has to have them. That's going to be the first thing you see when you walk in and see this sitting on the shelf. You're going to see them big old sails because of the shapes of them, the size of them, and it's what makes the ship. All right? So I just felt it would be naked without them. Even even just curling them up and, and furling them up on the mast, to me, just doesn't get it. That's my personal opinion, and I'm sticking to it. But, uh, like I said, on the old ships, it's the rigging you want to display. That's what you want to see on them old ones, all that rigging you've done. Uh, there's a lot of rigging on this, but still, the sails are what make a sail ship or a sailboat, whatever you want to call it. Okay, uh, I think that's it for this week. Okay, uh, one more thing before I call it quits on this video for the week. Um, let me show you a real easy alternative to this. If you don't have access to a sewing machine, or you don't have a friend or a lover who uh, can sew for you, and you don't want to spend the money to go to a seamstress, there's an easy way around all this. You just do the hem like I showed you with this uh, with this tacky glue. Just do the hem, and then you can come along with your pencil and your roller, and just draw your lines on there. Okay. Just put your ruler there and draw a line. Get a straight line on there, and uh, you will wind up with something like that. Now that's not bad. It, it's really not. I see. I've seen a lot of guys do this, and I think it might even tell you that in the directions. I'm not sure. I'd have to read them again. But I have seen a lot of guys do this, where they just draw the lines on with a pencil. And if you don't even like the lines, because you feel it makes the sails look too busy or whatever, just eliminate that. Just get your uh, pattern laid out. Get your hem on there and, and put your sails on. You don't even need the lines if you don't want them. Now, like I said, there's two sails that have got the reef points on them. And you might hear my little buddy in the background whine, and we got him locked in here in the bedroom with me because he's driving the wife nuts and he's wanting some attention. But uh, you just take and draw two parallel lines this way, okay? And what I done is I stitched it, but my reef line, my reef points were right here, right on on this stitch line, and in the center of these two, right in the middle, right there is where I I hand sewed that off. You know, you're still going to probably need some needle and thread. That's no big deal. You can get that anywhere if you don't have a sewing machine or if you don't want to mess with all that. But it's real simple. Just cut your pattern out, leave a little room for a hem, and do it this way. That, that's really not a bad looking uh, idea right there. Like I said, <clears throat> I've seen a lot of guys do this. So, you know, it's uh, whatever you're up to. Whatever, whatever you uh, feel like taking on. You, you just... You know, it, it looks good either way you do it. It really does. All right, so that's enough for this week. I got to play with the dog.
and there there's the troublemaker right there you can see he got himself a haircut oh I listen to him whine hey come here come here get in the get in the video come here come here get over there let them people see you little troublemaker that's him